Hello, everybody! Welcome back to our of Gudgeon List Streets. We're on a streak of 174, technically. I... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, cards on the table. I had another run where I won, but I lost the footage, and I'm really upset about it because it was such a fun... I mean, the run was pretty good, but it was like, it was a severe podcast-style episode, but anyway. We're, we're, we'll try to talk about the same topics, but let's roll our die real quick. Oh, baby. Convict. She's really trying to become the most played character here. Look at me. Look at me, she said. Wait, was there somebody? Hold on. Am I crazy? Let, let me go back and look at the stairs real quick. Was, I thought I saw something weird. No, okay, it's just map. Never mind. I thought the I thought Lonk looked kind of strange for some reason. Oh man, streak lost. We uh, we restarted or something. Yeah, we're on 174, and that is you know what, that is exciting. We we are very very close to a, a brand new chapter. We are four days away, right? Four. Four episodes away, at the very least, to the end of the Gungeon series as we know it. It's it's going to change. It's going to no longer be Advanced Gungeons and Dragons. We're like this series is, in this form is done. We're we're going to restart from the. Uh, I mean, not from the probably not from a fresh save file or nothing, but. We're gonna we're gonna restart and we're gonna check out the new stuff. By restart, I mean like episode one, part one. We're starting from there, but it's probably the same save file. Maybe maybe at some point, if you guys are interested, I've, some people request that I start a brand new save file from scratch. In addition, oh, what do you got for me? You know what? That is a very interesting item to start off with. I'll take it. It's almost kind of like a randomizer run. Where we just got a big damage up, but we got a garbage accuracy build. God, getting it on the convict too, who already has like a little bit of issues with accuracy is a little rough. We'll make it work though. We'll make it work. Just got to get a little bit closer to enemies than I probably would normally like to. And maybe just utilize the heck out of the Molotov. Huh. That trajectory was quite bizarre. But anyways, back on the topic of, yeah, we're, we're starting over. We're starting back from square, <laughs> not really, from, from part one. And for those of you who are wondering why, maybe, because people people get really excited about semantic numbers and really want to see, like, oh, Rita, what if you got your series to a thousand? Like, okay, I mean, yeah, that would be a fun little tidbit to be able to say about it but also it's just semantics numbers don't matter life is a lie what is reality but more so it's just like think think about it for a second like this is this is the final update in theory unless they pull an Edmund McMillan and they do something else later which I'm gonna say don't count on it like really don't count on it I think that they're probably sick of their code and want to probably start from the ground up if they ever were to revisit Gungeon again, which isn't doesn't seem like it's completely off the table based off of some of their God, it's just, that just it just even though the wall didn't come up. I knew it was I knew it But don't like the next game is definitely not Gungeon 2 like that's been confirmed and The game after that who knows they said they they might not be done with the Gungeon franchise per se It doesn't mean they aren't done but you know because who knows like the next game might come out and it might be even more like special and charming to to them and everyone might be might do amazing might be outrageously popular but this is our final chance kind of to to bring in people to the gungeon community unless modding takes off and and brings in a new crowd but i'd say it's probably the last real time that the gungeon community has a huge, huge opportunity to, to grow and bring in new people. And new people are way less likely to click on part 276 of a series 
than they are to click on part one. So we're starting from the ground up as far as like how we're how we're going to tackle tackle the series. One one more time and then we're done. The farewell to arms series of mine will probably be the last last one, you know? Like that's not saying that it's gonna end anytime soon. That's just that's probably gonna be the last moniker it goes by. And that's kind of exciting. But also a little a little bit of a bummer. You know, it, it it's been a ooh, it's been a really special special time going through AG and D. It's obviously it's been the, the largest hit on my ch on my channel. Like I I owe a lot of my growth to it. Like my channel over doubled since AG and D came out. Been doing this for seven years, but the the one year ish of AG and D has over doubled my channel, like the entire like six prior years, you know? This is kind of exciting, and it doesn't really matter that much that it's inaccurate. We can make that work. That's kind of nice. I'm into it. But all good things must come to an end. Implying my thing is good. Hilarious. I'm gonna go turn my feet down because It's just the meme at this point. We kind of just... It's been a couple... It's been a hot second since we've, uh, we've messed with it, but still. <gasps> Robo Toes. Gotta love Robo Toes. Any bit of movement speed up is always exciting to get. Just because I like to go fast. <laughs> I like to go fast. So if we can do that and we get a piece of armor just as a little bit of a bonus, hey oh, I'll take it. But... Alas, there's another major thing I want to uh, I want to touch on with this being the last potential opportunity for like an e you know like a huge potential boost to the Gungeon community, like huge PSA. Be nice to new people coming into the game. Like for God's sake, <laughs> just like if you if you like the game in any way. You should want to see it, it get sent off in a nice way. Like, so, and there's a difference between being mean, being neutral, and then and being helpful. Like, like for example, if you go into the the Gungeon Discord, the big one, and ask for help, you're going to be called like the nastiest stuff. And it's and it's just that's just ridiculous to me. That is just ridiculous to me. You can't you can't go in there and look for help without being like called words that I wouldn't you know dream of using. And that's just so sad <laughs> to think that like you you have this game that you like enough to you know join a public forum to you know seeking other people who have the same interest and then ripping new people who wanted who want to like it. What is the point of that? That's so sad to me. So, like, PSA slash request for the new age, or not age and D, for, uh, what is the, what is the new abbreviation? Uh, FTA? That seems like that's something else. That sounds like that's another thing. I don't know. Farewell to arms. For the final update. Just do your best. If, if someone's looking for help, like, Try to help him if you if you have the chance, or at the very least, if you want to say something negative or you think they're dumb, like that one that's weird, but just like just just let them try to like the thing you like. You know, it's such a special game, and it, it, it's such a bummer that the like the one of the biggest areas where you can go to communicate it, about it is just. Oh man! All right, we're not gonna we're not gonna harp on that too long. Not everybody in that specific place is, you know, is that way. I'm not trying to say that, but it is a, it is a bummer. It is a bummer to not be able to to receive help. So like, I'm formally requesting my community here, who's here for AG and D, who maybe has been here for a while or maybe is still just new, like be welcoming. And take this to other aspects of your life as well. Just, like, be welcoming. If you want to see your game 
potentially like get mod like people care about adding mod support and stuff like that the game needs to have a community in the future if you want the game to have a life after like modders are going to need to have a community that is looking for mods it's, you know like to to feel like there's a justification for spending their time on it like besides just for themselves so like you know be a decent person <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying it but like and and uh, i don't know i i want to i want to foster that and if anybody feels like they aren't getting you know if they if they want help they need help stuff like that i uh whoop. you can you can feel free to to join my discord if you want i i can try to help otherwise there's a lot of people that that can help there's a link in the description for that there's a there's a specialized little gungeon section of that where you can talk about the game uh and I, I mean, I have it in my my rules <laughs> not to have gatekeeping in. Like, if it hap happens, I'll be very disappointed. Uh, and it'll be very frowned upon by me. So, you can feel free to join that link in the description. We get the ability to steal. That is nice. I could steal the rat key. Oh, baby. I, I mean, I kind of want double vision, to be honest. But I'm not going to take it. None of that is really speaking to me. We just do that, and then we have do we have two keys. We have two keys. Hey, oh, okay. I uh, I've I've grown I've grown tired of metronome. What? That is weird. What's that synergy with? All out of law. Is that just the one that makes it so? Oh no. Oh, it makes us fire shots when we reload. Eh. It's okay. It seems okay. Pop. I don't know if we really look for secret rooms here. Whoops. I don't think there can be one off there. I should have checked, but like I'd be I'd be mad if there was a secret room off that direction. Alright. We'll check here and then we'll just blank in the shop. Dr. Soren, we already checked there, but still. All right, we out of here. We out of here. Oops, hold on. All right. So we have metronome. I don't really want to use my standard. I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of... Kind of... Oh, just hope that we get a lot of ammo. We'll try to stick to, to one gun a little bit. Oh, we should use that table tech flip. I believe, yeah, I believe that's what it's called. Table tech flip. Can we get a table tech back flip, please? But anyway, another, like, a huge thing that I was talking about in my haul, in my last video that I lost, which is such a bummer it was it was a very fun podcast style episode was uh some whoop, sponsored sponsored spurred by uh by the discord question section that i'll get to in just a moment I'll, I'll rehash it it's always weird like whenever you lose footage i i always have this weird thing where i it feels disingenuine to uh to repeat some of the things that I said, but like I, I, I want to make sure. First of all, I want to make sure this question gets questions get answered because uh, I thought they were very good. I, I, I thought they were a fun topic to talk about, but I don't know. It might it might not be as big and in depth as the the prior time that got missed. Oh, and it's like it's full on lost. Like the audio, I still have the the, the literal footage. I mean, I guess I could put that up, but there, there's no there's no voice of mine, which. It's not, not my style of let's play. I just, I don't, kind of hate that term too, but it's not my style to do uh, no commentary. I, I just, to me, I don't get the the appeal of that, but people have appeal. Uh, see appeal for it. I was really hoping there was going to be a key in here. 
Alright. Fill up. Okay. But anyway, the question from Nick is probably asked and answered before, which it, it has, as far as I know, it has not been, at least not in videos. What was the way you got involved in YouTube? Why, like, why did you get involved in YouTube? And I, I feel like there's a couple ways that it can be interpreted. First one being like, what it maybe, is there anyone who inspired you to, or what, like what inspired you to literally, to literally do it in the first place? Hey, okay, I'll take that. It's, I, I've grown, I've grown a little bit more tolerant of it. Uh, but yeah, like, I'll start by saying like the people that originally got me interested way back, because I've been doing this for seven years. So seven-ish years ago, the people that inspired me were, uh, oh, I kind of want that. Uh, Seamus, which is SSOHPKC. I don't even think he makes videos anymore. Uh, and I think Chugga Conroy, like way back, way back. I think he still does. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't tried, watched or tried to watch any of their things for probably like six years. But originally, I think those were the people that got me excited about the aspect of doing it. But like four years ago, I was way, way more like I got my huge bout of inspiration uh, from from probably Northern Lion. Like that's that's when I got really excited, really excited about taking it from I don't know being silly to providing extra value. I don't know, like not that. Chugga Conroy or anything like that. especially Chugga Conroy. He, he does crazy if you don't know who he is he does a lot of like very in-depth well-researched let's plays of mostly Nintendo games or all Nintendo games all Nintendo mostly 90% Nintendo games so I'm definitely not trying to say that he, there's no thought in that but it's just like that's when I when I branched out into doing like PC stuff then when I got that's when I got excited about indie games and that's that's when I feel like I really my channel like actually probably started was maybe like three or four years ago. I consider everything else that happened before it to like almost be a completely different venture, to be honest, like a completely different one. But that's so that's like maybe the people who got me inspired. So I'd say like my my channel. Let's call it my old channel, even though it's the same one. It was in probably inspired by like Chaga Conroy and and Seamus. But after that, yeah, my second channel, we'll say the channel as you probably know it today. Like the channel as you can you can come to expect today is was inspired by Northern Line. Shocking, probably nobody. But he, he, I don't know. I think he's been a very influential person for people playing any kind of indie any roguelikes or or even just like indie games on on youtube i think he's been a like a juggernaut force you he, you hear him come up a lot with anyone like that i associate with which is really interesting but what kind of inspired me to do videos in the first place it's like it's not actually an entirely new completely new concept for me doing like even before the seven years I always wanted to do I, I I always wanted to make stuff like I just wanted to make things like so bad like I would do claymation I would do like this is way back way back I would do like little sketch comedy type things news type shows I would make music I would like I've done all of it I would make comics I would make websites like forums games everything just like anything everything and everything should we sacrifice a bunch of health i think so but i even like i found a, a video and i hope that i can find it again it's really really annoying because i i was like i was a child i was under 10 for sure under 10 for sure i uh there, a godzilla game came out for the playstation and I literally, I set up the camera pointing at the screen, doing a let's play, effectively, like a very bad one, but that's what it was. Um, and 
yeah, I did that like a long, long time ago. Before YouTube, really. Like, maybe YouTube was a thing, but it wasn't really. It wasn't really a thing. I really should have just kept my Helix. I forgot that. I keep forgetting we have Metronome because I, I tried, I'm trying to play like we don't have it. Because I feel like it creates a slightly less interesting uh, gameplay perspective for me. But so yeah, like I've 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 been interested in that concept for ever, like for a long time. And it's really it really feels like I have always just been waiting for a time where I could talk talk about games, uh, share share exciting games. Uh, share just and just share general positivity because it's so it's way too easy to find negativity out there and for some reason it's just extra easy to find it with video games like I and I want I that's something I want to be worked on and that's something that I hope I hope that I can help foster a, a more positive view like why why does this hobby why is it more likely to bring in upset people i don't know i don't know that that's a psychology thing that, that's another thing i'm interested in I've, I've talked about recently oh baby that's amazing but that's a that's an entirely different thing so i yeah just i've always wanted to to just create a fun create fun new things that people are excited to to have like excited to have excited to watch excited to listen to excited to just have in their in their life in some capacity it's always been so exciting and the fact that i could in influence anybody's game taste and help show them new things and maybe help show them new ways of thinking about things that they maybe didn't like or like already that's that's so exciting to me and that's that's what drives me extra in addition to the fact that it, it probably is obvious even though even though I talk with energy for any I'm able to for an entire hour straight <laughs> like I am absolutely an introvert and I think I think that that's obvious anyways but I am a complete introvert I don't I don't know I, I don't talk in the way I do on video in my normal life but that doesn't, and that's not because I'm faking this. It's more like, if anything, it's like I'm faking, you know, going to going to work or something like that. I just, I, I don't know how. I don't. It, it's so much easier to, to talk in this way and to talk talk to the internet, and it feels like it, it lets me get things out that I I don't know how to properly get out anyways, or like it, it helps. It, it helps to find a crowd of people that, you know, are interested in hearing this message or just, or just hearing, you know, me drone on about playing things optimally, like why I think certain things work, why certain things don't. Just like having an audience to listen, you know, it, it's, it makes me it makes it so much more um, likely for me to feel like I can share. Because it feels like the audience wants to hear it. Otherwise, why just subscribe, you know? Like, why Why would you be here if you didn't... If you weren't interested about something that I'm putting out? So it makes it easier to talk about it. And that's another... Oh, that was an amazing ammo get. It's another major reason. Another major reason is to, to vent, to like have an extra, have like an outlet for me to actually like, like I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not faking on YouTube any kind of energy or anything like that. Oh, should we do that? I think we should. It's like more, more the real me than, than what most people see in my normal life. So like, it's, it's kind of the opposite, I, I would think, of how people seem to assume YouTubers are. And, and I'd be willing to bet a lot of the people you watch on YouTube who you think might be like faking something. Maybe not all of them, but I bet you a handful of them that's closer to like that. That's like what they, or maybe it's like what they want to be, you know, or, or what they see, what they see themselves as internally or something like that. So 
I don't know. I, I've become a lot less, like, annoyed with people who are really excited in, in videos. Like, there, there's, like, a layer where you can tell that they're maybe being oversight. Like, especially when you're gearing it, like, literally towards kids. That can be... That can be a bit scary. But even that, like, maybe they're just, like, you know, they're still very childlike deep down, maybe. We don't know. That was a, this was a tangent. Uh, I definitely, <laughs> I'm talking about a lot of different stuff that I didn't even talk about in the other videos, so. It's good. I, I, uh, double, double vent. But, alas, that's, that's essentially it. And, uh. <laughs> Let's answer it. I, I, I'm gonna answer another question. I'm gonna skip a couple and we can go back to the other ones before. But this one just is really, um. I saw this one last time and I think it's really, like, appropriate with what we're talking about right now and that's where do you think you would be if you didn't weren't doing YouTube or if you never started YouTube because I just I think that's a very um, on on topic question for this right now that's from Duke Fishlord by the way Duke Fishlord Twitch subscriber extraordinaire that's right if you subscribe or follow on or, or support on patreon you get an extra little shout out hey thanks Duke Fishlord where where would you be if you didn't start YouTube I think that oh, I don't really want to do this, but I don't want to leave it either because I think it's decent. I think that I, cause like I said, I, I worked on a little bit of everything, but the thing I probably would be doing, like not answering a, just like a different type of YouTube because I feel like that's like a bit of a cop out. Oh boy. Really? Really? That didn't seem like it should have fallen into me, but okay. Well, at least we can go do this gun game. Bizarre. But yeah, if I if the answer can't be just like a different type of YouTube, then I would say probably. Well, probably um. I'd probably be working in in games in some way. Like I think it's just always been such a special special thing to me. Oh boy, how do I do this? I'm gonna wait a second to finish my my thought process. Cause I this room is so strange. Okay, good. Big boom. Alright. But if I was not doing anything like that, like cop out answer aside. Wow, this run is getting good. I would probably be uh either working working on games. Maybe I would be Maybe may reviewing games, but I don't know. Like the other thing, maybe psychology in some sort of way. Like maybe behaviors, behavior science. Maybe in humans or maybe in animals. One of the, one of the two. I think that would likely be something that I would be pursuing otherwise. But if if not a different type of video, like some kind of more higher like really high highly produced something like that that is something that i have in my skill set i just i just don't typically utilize it because i i kind of like the the rawness that is this uh this format uh oh uh oh oh okay well there's nothing we can do except fall in a pit for no reason Where's the fuse? Did I put out the fuse? Did I put out the fuse with my blank? Can you do that? What happened? I mean, we don't have any we don't have any keys, so we can't get it, but I'm really confused. This accuracy is so bad, but I don't want to be over there in case it explodes. That'd be two hits back to back. Boy, oh freaking boy. But I think I'd be a lot sadder if I didn't start YouTube, that's for sure. Like, a, it was a big turnaround point for, uh, for my emotional stability. Press like for emotional stability. I think that was a, qu a quote from one of the other videos. Uh, but, yeah, I think I'd be a lot, a lot less happy. Like, I think it's really let me push a lot of 
things out there and and help me find that there is there is a lot of people out there that don't want to just be toxic for the hell of it don't want to just <laughs> you know like gatekeep special things that don't want to just be awful for the sake of being awful it it helped like who because but before that you know it's it's really easy to find people that are that are rude like it's really really easy it is the least unique person on the internet maybe <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, but like it is is one of the more most boring people you can be on the internet, in my opinion. Like is is a uh, a rude person. So it's just it's been a, it's been a, a big helper doing YouTube to to get myself all out there and get my mental state like a lot more in check, a lot more handled, a lot more realistic. It's been great. Why did that bounce off of nothing, though? This game is garbage, and I'm angry about it. Let's uh, go flame the forums. No. Huh. I'm not trying to like. I'm not trying to directly throw sh like shade, throw shade at anybody. But if anybody deserves to have shade thrown at them, it's the people that want shade thrown at everyone for any reason. You know, like. That's that's what I think. It's just if your whole thing is being awful to just to be funny or to be heard or to get attention, I guarantee you there's 20 better ways to do it. Like there's 20 better ways to do it that won't make you feel empty when you turn off your computer. You know? I guarantee it. Huh? Let's destroy this boss. Segways are weird. But we should, uh, this should be pretty smooth. Can we talk about, uh, the boss damage cap going down for the bajillion time? Actually, I don't even really mention if I mentioned, don't know if I mentioned it in the last video. But, yeah, the boss damage cap is, it's supposedly going down just a little bit. Super excited about that. Like, I feel like it just doesn't. Is it necessary? No. You're kidding me? That's off of the shop. That sucks. That sucks. I was really banking on it. Because I don't... Well, I don't want to switch my guns, though. But, that being said, I know the mini-bosses don't actually have the damage cap. Interesting. Okay, so we don't have and now we couldn't deal damage to ourselves to get into this room even if we wanted to I'm just gonna hope we get a blank but it's looking like we're gonna leave this floor with a lot of chests unopened which is so sad so sad upside down tornado this is really doing a lot of damage. If if there was no boss damage cap, we would be uh, we'd be done with that man in seconds. What hit me? Was the that did the hammer AOE hit me or did the little shot go out the go off the side here? That'd be one that I'd have to watch back to even to understand what went wrong. Which a lot went wrong there. We lost our big old metronome, which I'm trying not to be. Uh, Try not to care about too much. But then we also lost all our ammo. Finally! A chest we can open. <sighs> we just get this every freaking day. It's it's not bad. Like in fact, it is a uh, what the folks in the biz like to call very, very good. We do just get it all the time. Very tempted to uh, to garbage the gun, but we should have six, five attempts at this. Six on the next floor. The owl, honestly, we've had him a lot too, but. 
but he's cute. I just have no faith. I don't. I don't know if the. Uh... Oh shoot! There, there's three rooms left. I don't know if the dragon can drop anything. I don't think he can. We're doing wild damage. If we had max spice right now, we could potentially one-shot the boss. We could maybe, maybe get away with breaking the damage cap. That guy... Was he able to absorb a shot? Sad. Sad, big sad. Hallway clear. Save for ammo, I guess. What do we want to use on the boss? I don't really feel like using rad gun. Kind of feel like using... Helix? We can get ammo after the fight. But this one's full. If the balloon gun was it was full, I would maybe use that instead. But then a lot's on the line. Like, a lot more than I feel like. We're doing really nice damage. Considering we don't even have any metronome charges right now, we're doing really well. I feel like we're probably going to get down to like 120 or something like that, 150 by the end of this fight. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, I don't like it. Thank you, Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl. I don't know. Should we switch? We don't have anything like... We don't really have any reason to be holding on to this. Yeah, there we go. No metronome charges. gonna try this is risky to even be holding this right now before before we need to but I'm gonna put those all up now god dang it god. so close so close not that we really need the health ups but I hope we uh, I hope we get this If we didn't have movement speed up, that would have been a pretty, pretty nasty cycle, to be honest. All right. No blank. No blank here. You know what? I, I've had enough of this stinker. I've had it too many times. What's another, like, technically good gun? I've, I've had this a lot, too. I love it. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. But I want to see what kind of high-ish tier gun we can get. That's exciting. I like the dueling laser a lot. It completely does not work with, uh... <laughs> with metronome, but that's fine. We can try to steal something else. Just because... We have silver bullets, so we do bonus damage against cursed boyos anyways. Four episodes left. That is nuts. I mean, it, not really four episodes, but until the, the end per se, but you know what I'm getting at. Like, everything's changing. New thumbnail, new, uh, new, new number. That's enough for some people. It's different. It's a whole different thing. It's like that. Uh, it's like that thing. If you if you have an old ship and you start changing out all the parts, whoop, at what point is it no longer the same ship? How many parts do you need to change before it's not the same ship anymore? Because if you change everything in it, if you were to say like this is this is a ship like whatever this is ship A, you change every single part. Every single part. None of the parts are the same at all. Is it still ship A or is it now ship B? Who knows? I mean, 
I'd say like if all the parts are, I don't know, because the, th the thing is it feels weird. Like if you say the answer is, uh, if, if any of the parts are the same, then it's the same ship. Why does that one part have the power to make it a completely, I don't know. Where am I getting, getting at with this? I'm not positive about it. I just, I just think it's an interesting, uh, is it a philosophical question? Maybe it's a phil I think it's a phil philosophical question, I guess. I don't know. Is there is there a true answer? Maybe. Who? Also, I wanted to mention something else that I that I've been I've been getting asked a lot, uh, and that's if I well, a mixture of asking and and like requesting. People have been talking about me starting a, an actual podcast, like relating to to games or relating to. Uh, you know what basically like my tangents in gungeon without the gungeon behind it just for for listening maybe not having like the distraction that you know gets me derail derailed because we have a game that we're playing behind it and that's something i want to talk about because i i have definitely had interest in it like big shocker the guy who listed the 20 other things that he's been interested in yes i i have definitely dabbled with the idea of starting a, a podcast of some sort and i would like to uh, to formally request people responding whether or not they would be interested in listening or if they give it a try or something like that is that something that you would be interested in i'll, I'll give you the pitch for what it would generally be a, about uh it would be like on the topic of what we were talking about today essentially is just a more positive look on on games maybe throwing in like maybe throwing in some a dabble of um my, my thoughts of game design and, and psychology sort of like a little bit like a very like an, a very unprofessional but not pretending to be professional approach to it and maybe doing like a little bit of almost reviewing games both old and new like games long forgotten to the past games very cherished from the past also current current games current you know topics etc like that all well yeah trying to have a more positive like what what went right here instead of what went wrong here kind of an attitude because it's ooh. It's so easy to find, like, for the, in the same way it's easy to find negative in anything, it's easy to find people in in games, media, games, journalism, etc., kind of, like, hating on everything first because it gets people riled up, and riled up people make comments, and comments drive, you know, drive clicks and viewership and stuff like that. But I, it would be more on the on the topic of what what went right. Trying to keep a positive look. Trying to oh, is that? Oh, thank you, Full Metal Jacket. Forgot about you. Trying to keep it in in that sort of realm. While trying to maybe like bring new thoughts to to people. Maybe having maybe having friends or guests or something like that. That's what the uh, the the elevator pitch is, I guess. If that is something you're interested in. If you would watch, if you would support even something like that, especially like if that's the kind of thing like you would, because it, it would be um, more produced. So like maybe, maybe that's the kind of thing I would run a Patreon for and stuff like that. Who knows? Would you be interested in it? Would you support it? Like what, what level of interest would you have in it? Would you even, is it not even something you care about? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because I've been getting a lot of people requesting it recently and it's not something that I've uh, that's out of the blue it's something that I've I've definitely thought about myself before so it, it would be I think it'd be fun but it would you know it would only be fun if people people cared in some capacity never fun to uh, to talk to the to the void and the void never talks back, you know. Anyway, this run is so easy. This this run is brainlessly easy. 
If we get hit here, we still get to keep our metronome because of Full Metal Jacket. We're at, what, max metronome with this thing? We're going to run out of ammo. Ooh. Mr. Owl. I should have definitely, like, thrown away some of my other passive with the, with the rat ring. But it's just, like... I, I just like the build we have <laughs> enough like it, it's I wouldn't change it I guess I didn't change it so I guess I wouldn't change it oh come on I want to keep that full metal jacket full metal jacket we are definitely gonna run out of ammo if we could keep it for this phase that'd be fantastic I know we could just use the owl as a shield Six shots. We get six shots for the next phase, too. That's great. Before we have to switch to something that doesn't have the ammo. Please let me... Yeah. That's such a st stinky move to start out with. Gotta love Mr. Owl, though. Gotta love Mr. Owl. All right, now we gotta switch. Dueling laser. Time to shine, man. Okay, and I think we're good. Did we, uh, did we get a true lead god there? I think we did. But that run was banging. Dare I say, a banger supreme. Very, very smooth, very easy. No real question marks on the, on the run making me feel like I, I might have lost. Let's take a quick peek over here at our items because I'm very curious did we get true lead god right gun two one two three one two four three five and then an imaginary six right there banging eye patch plus plus one bullets plus silver bullets I mean, silver bullets didn't do that much I guess they helped with the boss a bit uh, yeah, we just had so much nice stuff. All in all, smooth. But that's going to do it for today. Let me know about uh, your thoughts on a potential podcast. But in the meantime, subscribe for daily Enter the Gungeon videos and plenty more, especially when the new update comes out. Make sure to make this your one-stop shop for Farewell to Arms. I'm going to be having a buttload of content on it when it comes out. Uh, ideally, like, unless disaster strikes the day it comes out, on the 5th. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Retromation. I'm probably going to be streaming it as well. Maybe on the 5th? Depends. I don't know. We'll see. But thank you, thank you. Join the Discord. Link in the description if you want to ask me a question that I'll answer and maybe go on an entire episode-long tangent on. Who knows? Click the link in the description. Pop over to the Rito Questions channel. Ask away. If you want to talk about Gungeon and not get uh, ripped to shreds, go to the Gungeon channel in my Discord. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.